My name is Tomáš, and I want to talk about HTML. To be more precise, I want to talk about some new features, or older one, but less known features of HTML you can use today. So, why I want to talk about this? Because I think HTML is often overlooked and underestimated these days. Maybe it's because we think HTML is simple. So, why we should bother, right? Just a bunch of text to make text bigger. Or maybe we don't have time to learn HTML because there's so much stuff going in the JS and CSS world, like cascade layers, uh, new stuff in JavaScript as well. Or maybe we don't care at all because we have JavaScript and styles, so we can make any element to look as we want and behave as we want, so who cares if it's there or something else. So, before we jump in, let's talk about building of something else. Let's talk about build, building a house. So, if you want to build a house, you first need a plant, where you have the rooms, what will be inside, where are the doors, windows, how the house will look like. You pass those plants to the construction workers. They will build a house for you, or you can build it yourself if you have time. And then comes the fun part. You can choose the colors, the decorations, get yourself a new design sofa you always wanted. And because we live in 21st century, you want a smart home as well, right? So you get yourself a brand new AI assistant, which will do everything you want, unless your name is Dave. Uh, so this is all nice, but sometimes it might end up like this. So we have shiny new home, but it's, there's something wrong. And unfortunately, this may happen with the web pages as well. So we may have nice shiny web page with clever CSS and a bunch of JavaScript. Everything is interactive and cool, but it may be hard for the users to use it. Uh, so imagine you are not looking at the blueprints for the house. What you are looking at is actually a website with each room being a page on the website and doors to the rooms, corridors and stairs. They actually serve as navigation, as links, and they guide the user across the web page. So if you have good plans, it's easy to use for the users. It's a pleasure to use such a website, as well as it's a pleasure to live in such a house if it's designed correctly without some uh, wrong drawers. So, and if you go too much and don't care about semantics at all, it may end up like this. So you have no idea what the doors, where are the doors, how to get into rooms, or what's inside the rooms. So, uh, semantic HTML is a key component when I create a page, and it can probably do a lot more than you think. So, raise your hands if you think you know HTML really good. Okay. I hope you are, you don't know HTML that good, because otherwise, uh, you probably don't take anything new from the talk. So I hope you're wrong. Uh, <laughs> uh, today I will show you eight new or older but less known HTML features, which can help you improve accessibility and performance on the website. They can help you with the user experience to make the usage of the site better. And they can help you with the developer experience because you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So let's start, shall we? The first thing I want to talk about is dialogue element. Martin mentioned it on the keynote, if you were there. Uh, so, modal dialogues are everywhere on the web right now. You can write on Twitter, share video with YouTube, check out uh, some item on your favorite eShop. So, you can en encounter it everywhere. And creating dialogue, which is actually usable for all users, is not that trivial. So, because of that, there is new HTML element in the spec, the dialogue element, which should take all the heavy lifting from you and the browser will deal with it. All you have to actually do is just a few lines of JavaScript to open the dialogue and eventually close it, or listen for the close event on the dialogue and process some value which was returned from it. And this is how it looks on the HTML. So we have the dialogue element. If you want to delete our data, so in some sort of confirmation dialogue, uh, you have two buttons, one to cancel, second to confirm. And because we've wrapped the buttons in the form with method dialog, if we click the button, the dialog will close itself, and the value of the button will be passed to the unclose event on the dialog, so we can easily process whether the user want to delete all the data or not. So, and this is the end result with just a couple of lines of CSS, so you can really style it as you want. 
You can even add more complex content into, into the dialogue if you want to. Uh, but because it's kind of a new thing, there are a few rough edges you need to take into account. First, if you want some more fancy features like animations on opening the model, you still need a JavaScript to actually implement that. The same, if you click outside of the dialogue, it won't close. So that's kind of common behavior for the model, so you probably want to add it as well. And there are still a few accessibility issues. Hopefully those will be solved soon. Uh, but if you decide to go with the, this, this element and use dialogue, you need really just a minimal amount of JavaScript to use it. You have the accessibility baked in, other features as well. You don't need to care where you put the dialogue in the DOM. It can be everywhere, and if you open it, it will be always at top. So support, it recently landed in all the browsers, but unless you want to live at the edge with the Safari, it's a good uh, idea to maybe use some polyfill in the worst case. Uh, but otherwise, it's there. You can feel free to use it and experiment with it. And so let's move to the second thing, which is details and summary elements. Another common pattern you probably encounter on the web uh, are those components where you have some uh, headings, which is clickable, with some sort of indicator whether it's closed or open. And if you click on the heading, it will expand and show additional content like the text, item description, or FAQs, whatever. If you want to build this, uh, you have a few options. You can use JavaScript, maybe some third-party library, or you can use HTML. So all you have to do is put on the page details element, uh, use summary as a first child, which will serve as the heading, the clickable part, and rest of the stuff in the details is the content, which will be revealed once you open it. And that's it. This is how it can look like. You can style it any way you want. And you have interactive element, which is quite common, and you don't need any line of JavaScript at all. It's just pure HTML. Uh, one thing to note is that it's not really good for very complex contents, but if you have some item description or FAQs, it's really great fit. And again, it's accessible by default as well, which is good to know because you have additional stuff for free. And it's supported in all major browsers, so there is really no need to uh, not using it if you can. Number three, uh, so you probably know picture and source elements, which allow us to tell the browser, this is my images of these sizes. They will have this size on the web. Pick whichever is best and download it. Uh, it works pretty well, but the problem is if this picture is important to you and you want to preload it, so you have to pick one size and you're screwed because you either download something big, which can be slow on the cell phone, or something small, which will be ugly. Uh, so that's where the image source set and image sizes comes in. Uh, they work exactly the same like source set and sizes on the image or source text. So again, you provide a list of sizes and images, and the browser will preload the best image for the, for the browser. You can even specify the image type, so you can preload modern image formats. Uh, but please know that if you should preload only one image because the browser doesn't know those images belong together, so you have to pick just one image format. And, but otherwise, it can help boost perceived performance for the users, and there are really no additional downsides. The support is pretty good, with the exception of Safari. Uh, <laughs> but it's still safe to use those attributes, because Safari will just ignore them and download whatever you specify in the ref, so there is really no reason not to use it. And number four. So another complex pattern on the web may be auto completions. So you have text input, the user starts typing, and he gets revealed a bunch of values he can choose from. Uh, again, usually we pick some JavaScript solution. Uh, but luckily, we can use data list element, which is basically native HTML only auto completion option. So you put the data list on, in the DOM, assign it some ID, throw in a bunch of options you want to show to users, and then with the list property, list, list attribute, you assign it to some text input. And now, if the user starts typing into text input, the options which match the string in the text input will be revealed. 
Uh, again, you don't need any JavaScript. It's position corrected below the input. It works out of the box. It's free work for you. So there are maybe some downsides, because it sounds too good to be true, right? Uh, first, you can't style it. Uh, for some, that may be disadvantage. For some, maybe not. But designers will complain, probably. Uh, and it's better suited for small sets. Uh, to be more precise, it's better suited for the use cases when you know the values beforehand. If you want to uh, change the values in data list based on the text input, it won't work very well with the screen readers. But otherwise, all the difficult stuff is handled by the browser, so you don't need to care. Support is pretty great. It even works in Internet Explorer, if that's still the thing for you. There are a few issues. Uh, those are the blue rectangles. Uh, for the Firefox, to us, those are mostly edge cases if you are not using the auto-completions on text inputs, but on different type of the input. So if you want to use it, please check, uh, check the is exact issues. But most of the time, you should be OK. So let's check the number five, uh, which is the enter key hint and input mode attributes. Uh, majority of the traffic comes from the cell phones these days. And you probably know that filling a form on the cell phone can be sometimes quite difficult. Uh, to make it easier for the users, you have option to change the enter key on the keyboard. So if you are building a chat app, you may use like the send button to hint the users that it will send some message. Or maybe magnifier glass to hint them that they are in the search. So they can better anticipate what kind of action they will trigger. Or you need to change the entire keyboard, for example, like the numbers, or you want to easily type uh, email address, so you want them to have at uh, somewhere visible. Uh, and that can easily be done with those attributes. You just specify what kind of entry you want, or maybe what kind of input. And the good thing is that most of the time, you don't have to deal with that, because if you use correct input types, like email or URL, the, br the browsers will usually pick the correct keyboard. But maybe you have some custom text input, and you want different type of keyboard, so you can always override it if you want to. And support is great again. The funny thing that is that desktop Safari doesn't support it, like uh, the input modes. But since it's just for the mobiles, it actually uh, doesn't matter. I think the Apple just ignored it for the desktop because of that. OK, number six. Uh, this one is actually my favorite one. Uh, you don't need it that often, but if you do, it can save you a lot of time and headache uh, when restructuring the DOM. So uh, probably a common pattern to some of you. Uh, you have modal dialog and some form inside. And that form in the red box, it's a different component uh, than the rest of the dialog. The dialog is component. Uh, it's quite common in React or different component-based libraries. And you can control what's inside the model, but you can't really control the buttons. And I want the blue button to actually submit the form, which right now is not possible because it's not inside the form. But you can use the form attribute on the button and pass it ID of that form. That way, you link those two together. And if you submit, hit the buttons, it will submit the linked form. Uh, the only disadvantage I could think of is that it doesn't work in Internet Explorer. Uh, otherwise, you can link the elements across the DOM, no matter where they are. Uh, also, it's good to know that you can link the inputs the similar way. So we can pass the form attribute on the input as well. Uh, but I would suggest not go too crazy with that. And it's supported in all major browsers. Uh, so this can really save you a lot of troubles if you need to work with similar cases, like was in the example. OK, uh, number seven. So a bunch of attributes which we can use for, use for the ordered list. It's reverse attribute, start, and type. So maybe you want to put together a list of your favorite Star Wars episodes, but you want to rank them from worst to the best. Normally, the one would be at the top, but you want to reverse that order. So that's where the reverse attribute comes in. It will swap the numbers without changing the DOM order. Or maybe you have design like this. So you have some feature list, and you 
uh, you have some section with the images. So you decide to implement as two ordered list, but the second one needs to start with number four. So that's what the start attribute is for. Just put, type start equals four and you're good to go. And the type attribute allows you to change the numbers. So maybe you don't, number, don't like the normal numbers, but you prefer Roman numerals or maybe letters. So you're free to change that as well. Uh, you can combine it, of course, so you can make some nonsense list like this one, uh, if you want to. Uh, and yeah, you can change the numbering on the order list this way without any CSS magic like mark pseudo selector or maybe pseudo elements like before. Just the HTML. And it's supported in all major browsers for a very long time. And now comes the final one, the button element. Now, you probably ask, hold on, what kind of joke is that? But everyone knows button, right? It's like common knowledge. Uh, okay, so who of you ever wrote code like this? Don't be shy, everyone has to start somehow. Okay, one brave person. Cool, a few more people, perfect. Uh, so I th have sometimes feeling like, like the button element is the hidden gem of the HTML because you can still find the pages with the code like this. Uh, if you want to navigate on the page with the keyboard, uh, you have really bad luck because you can't. Uh, so instead, please use buttons. We actually have three types of buttons uh, and one thing, some people maybe don't know as well, is that the submit button is default value. So sometimes I had colleagues which were surprised they have some weird bugs in the forms because they don't specify the type. Uh, and it's supported everywhere. Like even Internet Explorer knows what the button is, so, so please use it. Okay, uh, so those are the eight features uh, we just went through. And as I mentioned, they can help you with the accessibility because they will handle that for you. They can even help you with developer experience because you don't need to write some JavaScript for yourself or use some third-party library. It just works. They can help with the user experience to better help them finish the task they need on the page. And they can help with the performance as well because you don't need JavaScript, so less JavaScript to download and parse. Or they can download the best image for the browser, not the biggest one. And so did we see all? Uh, yeah, kinda. Uh, HTML can do a lot more thing, but I was promised I will be pushed back from the stage if I exceed the time. So unfortunately, I couldn't fit uh, much more things in, into the talk. Uh, but yeah, there is still much more things. Uh, some maybe cool things will come in the future as well. Uh, but the key point I want you to take from the talk is that HTML is a really key component for the web page and it can give you a lot of stuff for free. So you shouldn't hesitate to actually use it. Uh, so please build, don't build page, web pages like this, but rather build web pages like this. So that's all for me. Uh, I would really love to hear from you if uh, you learned something new or if you think something is missing uh, and I should mention some different elements. So you can get in touch with me on the Twitter or catch me uh, somewhere in, in the Web Expo uh, area. Uh, so I'm looking forward to all your replies and thank you for your attention. Uh, enjoy the lunch if you go to lunch and please use the button. Thank you.